Hey there, what is going on? It is Rob from Crypto Bobby. And today, with the markets moving somewhat sideways, pretty much evenly up or down a few percentage points across the board, I want to talk a little bit about outside of just the day to day movements of what's happening in cryptocurrency, um, something that I think has a decent possibility of happening in the near future, the potential next one to two months, and that might be uh, Ethereum ETH outperforming Bitcoin in the near future. So I want to talk about that, what that could potentially mean for you, how you can maybe make some moves based upon, based off of that, and then go from there. So let's hop into it. If you are new here, my name is Rob from Crypto Bobby. Hit that subscribe button if you are new. I do daily recorded videos on the subject of cryptocurrencies, as well as crypto happy hour, where just come hang out, drink some, uh, drink some whiskey, drink some beer with you guys, and talk about what is happening in the markets. So like I said, with the markets today, trading somewhat sideways, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of something that I'm thinking about, uh, and not necessarily, you know, an exact theory or prediction, really, but um, the potential of Ethereum to outperform Bitcoin in the uh, in the, the really the coming months and the coming two months or so. And the reason I'm thinking this is there's there's a couple different reasons behind really what I'm thinking about. Uh, and then I would really love to hear your comments as well, because, you know, a big part of this channel for me is talking to you guys about my thoughts, my my kind of intuition in the marketplace, hearing what you have to say and trying to kind of get a good collective understanding of what's going on. Now, before I get into things as well, I, I definitely just want to make the point too that I'm not a, you know, I'm not an Ethereum maximalist. I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. I'm not any type of, of cryptocurrency kind of one rules all or one doesn't. If you are that way, great. If you're not that way, great. Kind of it is what it is for me personally. But when I am looking at, when I'm looking at Bitcoin and when I'm looking at Ethereum, I kind of view... For, for myself personally, I think that both can exist side by side. I think that both Bitcoin and Ethereum serve very different purposes, in my opinion, in the marketplace. Bitcoin being much more of a store value and um, something used for kind of transactional purposes if it can scale. Uh, but Bitcoin for the time being, being much more of that digital gold store value, whereas Ethereum is, in my opinion, more of the kind of bet on the future of decentralization and what that could potentially mean for for the world is, you know, decentralizing so many different things, whether it's cloud computing or whether that's um, you know, decentralizing autonomous organizations, things of that nature um, that are enabled by the Ethereum protocol and the Ethereum network. So with that being said, you know, just kind of looking at a couple different things right now. So Bitcoin at the time being trading off of its all time highs, close to $5,000 or so right now trading a little bit below $3,700. Uh, and if we're looking at if we're looking at things from ETH's perspective on a USD dollar or on a USD dollar standpoint, uh, we Ethereum trading close to its all time highs a few weeks ago, uh, really around the September early September timeframe, September first, September second, up to its you know, close to all time highs of around $400 and now is back below 300 to 285 or so. But when we look at things, the big thing to look at when it comes to Ethereum versus Bitcoin and just in general of investment purposes is if you can't outperform Bitcoin, if you're, you know, if you're just looking at things from a pure investment perspective, you know, maybe you want to invest in something, not necessarily for, for the overall rate of returns, but just the attractiveness of the technology for the interest of the technology. That's great that, you know, you do you. But if you're looking at something from a pure investment perspective, what a lot of people are doing right now or what a lot of people measure things against is measuring it against Bitcoin. Does it actually outperform Bitcoin? Um, and what is the ratio it trades against Bitcoin? And does that ratio improve or does that ratio decrease? Can you buy more of can you buy more Bitcoin with a specific cryptocurrency over time, or can you buy less Bitcoin uh, with a specific cryptocurrency over time? And so if you're looking at that, and this is utilizing GDAX and Coinigy, but if you're looking at that for for Ethereum and Bitcoin, really what you want to, you know, what you want to compare is the actual, I'll pull this up on a, I'll make this time frame a little bit bigger here. I'll make it in three days instead of one day. But if we're looking at overall speaking on these charts, Ethereum had an incredible run back in May, back in June, and where it at one point in time from an ETH to Bitcoin pairing ratio was up all the way to close to 0.1%. 0.1 or really solidly at 0.14, 0.13 over a 0.1 uh, ETH to Bitcoin ratio. And that has since over the months of June, July, and August really stabilized underneath 0.1 to kind of the 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.6 ranges. So 
when you are looking at the ETH to Bitcoin ratio, it's it's down, it's cutting about half of what it was at its total peak in June, where Ethereum hit its all-time close to its all-time high that it just hit back in September as well, around that same range of about $400 USD per ETH. But at that point in time, Bitcoin was below $3,000. So now Bitcoin is back up above its, you know, back well above $3,000 at this point in time. And ETH is is significantly below where it was uh, in June at the, or at the peak of, of Ethereum in June at 285. So, you know, when I'm looking at things right now, I think, and not necessarily that it's just because Ethereum is, is guaranteed to get back to this ratio, because I don't think there's any guarantee in the marketplace. But when I am looking at things, two, two main things kind of pop in my mind as far as whether or not Ethereum could potentially outperform Bitcoin in the coming months. I, I'm really talking about the next one to two month time frame. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that Ethereum is going to succeed in the next five years and Bitcoin is not, or Bitcoin is, is not and, and Ethereum isn't. Um, so I'm not making any type of long-term um, you know, projections here, or predictions. But in my opinion, um, there's, there's two really interest, interesting things going on in the marketplace at this point in time. So the first thing is the technical advancements that are going on from a scaling perspective with Ethereum. So Ethereum is having a non-contentious hard fork in, I believe it is mid-October at this point in time. It was just put, pushed back a week or so. So Ethereum is having a non-contentious hard fork. If you just search on, if you just search online, Ethereum upgrade, um, this was this was an older article, but the Metropolis hard fork uh, and a couple other things. So if you just search online, you can read a little bit about some of the advancements that are happening. But ultimately speaking, the big thing and what is really, in my opinion, going to potentially drive the price action of Ethereum is during this hard fork if the transactions actually scale with with Ethereum. So there is, you know, with Ethereum right now, if you didn't actually get a chance to see um, Vitalik Buterin, the one of the founders of Ethereum and kind of the one of the big figureheads, he had a conversation. He had a uh, talk at TechCrunch Disrupt. Uh, Disrupt. I'll link to it again up here. It was, it was in the last week or so, uh, but I'll link to it up here. And with that being said, he had a conversation at TechCrunch Disrupt. One of the big things that I thought was kind of taken out of context, but was was a good nugget of information, is in regards to his overall thoughts on when ethereum can can scale and the, the example that was used was visa and how ethereum could potentially scale to the transaction size of to the transaction frequency of visa and right now it's ethereum is, is absolutely ethereum and bitcoin are nowhere near the, the the scalability of something like a centralized system and company run like visa that does you know hundreds and thousands of transactions per second right now ethereum really at at the max point can handle about six to seven transactions a second and if an ico happens it just gets backed up and clogged to all hell but if ethereum can and what the you know one of the big premises of this hard fork that's coming up and the improvements is outside of just privacy with zk snarks one of the big things that they're looking to do is increase the scalability of ethereum if if ethereum can scale to two three four times of what it is right now whether that's 20 you know 15 20 25 30 50 transactions a second i think you're going to see a significant price rise with ethereum because that's one thing that's really holding back the space right now at least from ethereum standpoint and if it seems to me like a lot of the developers in the Ethereum community are all on the same page or the majority of them are on the same page and they're working together towards the goal of increasing scalability and increasing the Ethereum network. So that's kind of the, the one thing that I think with the Ethereum hard fork going into place, the non-contentious hard fork going into place in mid-October, if that can truly scale the transaction capability of Ethereum, I think you're going to see a nice price increase in Ethereum. That's just kind of my personal opinion. It happened the last time they had um, you know, some significant improvements within the Ethereum network. So I think we might see a similar result here. But outside of that, you know, kind of the other point as well is while I think that Ethereum might be improving the transaction scalability and improving the, um, really just improving the Ethereum protocol and the Ethereum network as a whole. Bitcoin is is going through a pretty contentious period. If you know you're not too familiar with what's going on with Bitcoin, there is a heavy debate around Segwit 2x and whether or not there should be, uh, essentially whether or not Bitcoin should 2x the block size. And that is leading to a pretty contentious debate, a pretty, 
a pretty nerdy debate that, that's going on right now. If you're on Twitter, you know, you see people with the two X in their headlines. You see no two X in the headlines. You see a lot of people going after each other in pretty negative manner, which is almost unfortunate to see in my opinion. But with that being said, there was initially planned with the New York agreement, which is a, a small minority of people in the Bitcoin community, but a very powerful number of people in the Bitcoin community got together with the New York agreement and came to this conclusion of, okay, we're going to run Segwit2x. And now a lot of people are saying, hey, we weren't included in that agreement. We never gave you permission to speak for us. And we don't want to run Segwit2x. We don't want to double the block size. So now not only is the, you know, the whole Bitcoin cash thing that went down in August happen, which is, you know, your second Bitcoin per se. Um, but now there are people that are saying that Bitcoin core and the or Bitcoin core and then the Segwit2x community might split as well. So there is potentially going to be three Potentially, I'm not saying this for, for certain, but this is you know, some of the rumors and some of the people talking in the space are saying that you could potentially have a, a Bitcoin, a Bitcoin Segwit 2X and a Bitcoin Cash in November. And even if that doesn't come to fruition, I think the uncertainty isn't necessarily a great thing. And it might lead some people to put their money into Ethereum uh, and to kind of move it to something that may or may not you know, be improving from a technical standpoint while some of the Bitcoin community is kind of arguing amongst each other. And... Yeah, holding it back, not holding it back, it's it's kind of hard to determine at this point in time, but there's just some instability within the Bitcoin community right now. So those two things together lead me to somewhat of the conclusion that I think Ethereum for the next month to two months, let's say over the, the month of October, November, might be able to you know, get back up to its kind of all-time highs against the, or, or not necessarily, I mean, that's pretty aggressive too, to get back to the all-time highs. I mean, you're talking about essentially if, if, Bitcoin stay stable at the rate right now, you're talking about basically a 2x in Ethereum's price if it gets back to those all time highs, which would be which would be pretty strong. It'd be over, you know, $500 or so, which I think is certainly possible, but it's a strong movement. So what I'm thinking about right now is, well, that microphone almost went down. What I'm thinking about right now is number one, um, if Ethereum can pull off the, the hard fork successfully. And what I mean by successfully is, is, is the promise of increased scalability, is the promise of privacy, is that actually going to happen or is it going to be a, a technical shit show? If it is a technical shit show, then this, this doesn't really matter. But if they can successfully pull off that Metropolis hard fork and a lot of the implementation, uh, you know, a lot of the things that they're talking about of, of improvement within Ethereum, then I think, you know, your number one can be set for a, a strong move. And then adding to that, I think that within some of the instability of the, the Segwit2x versus no2x debate that's going on right now, I think that either might just cool off Bitcoin a little bit or um, or alternatively you might have some people take their money from Bitcoin and move it into Ethereum. I don't know if that's going to be you know 100% true, but if I was a if I was a betting man right now, I'd say, I think there's a good possibility that Ethereum could outperform Bitcoin in the near future. Does that mean that long term that Ethereum is going to be the best platform for decentralization ever? No. Um, does that mean that I think that Bitcoin is going to be failing or you know might not be at you know five or ten thousand dollars in the near future? No, not at all. But I'm just talking about for the near future with the next one to two months. I think that's a pretty realistic possibility based upon those two factors. I'd love to hear your thought process below as well. You know whether you think Ethereum might outperform Bitcoin in the next month to two months, or if Bitcoin is just going to continue to really keep dominating and leading the space like it's been doing for the past five seven years. So would love to hear your comments below. And again, if you are new to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. That'd be fantastic. I would really, really appreciate that. And also, like I said, prefacing the conversation and I'll end off, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. I'm not an Ethereum maximalist. I, I like both technologies. I think they have a very solid space in the, you know, in the ecosystem together, Bitcoin being that incredible store of value that it has been for since really its foundation and Ethereum having, having the potential, I think Ethereum is more of a, a potential kind of moonshot of having that decentralization potential, you know, whether it's ICOs, whether it's decentralized autonomous organizations, whether it is, um, you know, kind of decentralized computing or decentralized this or decentralized that, um, that's that's kind of my thought process there. So thank you so much for your time today. Hope you found this video enjoyable. Would love to hear your comments below and hit that subscribe button if you are new. Rob from Crypto Bobby signing out. Have a good one. Peace.